Welcome to our latest video on aluminium and aluminium compounds. This video is suitable for A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to understand that some aluminium compounds exhibit covalent bonding, even though aluminium is a metal and the reasons for this. You should also be able to explain the electron deficient nature of some aluminium compounds and how this is overcome in terms of the formation of dimers and donor acceptor compounds. And finally, you should be able to explain the meaning of the term amphoteric and be able to write chemical equations to show why aluminium oxide and aluminium hydroxide are classed as amphoteric compounds. Now in our previous videos, we've learned that compounds of boron and aluminium are often described as being electron deficient. In these compounds, the boron and aluminium atoms do not end up with a full outer shell of electrons, i.e. they don't have the normal stable octet. Now if we look at all three compounds here, we've drawn dot and cross diagrams. And if we look at the first compound, the boron's electrons are represented with crosses and the chlorine's electrons are represented with dots. And you can see that boron only has a share of three pairs of electrons and doesn't have the stable octet, the outer shell of eight electrons, and therefore it's described as electron deficient. Now the same is true of AlCl3 here. This is also classed as electron deficient because there's only three pairs of electrons surrounding the aluminium and it doesn't have its stable octet. BF3 is also an electron deficient species here. Now in each of these compounds, the group three atom only has a share of three pairs of electrons and it will therefore be able to form a dative or coordinate bond to other atoms and molecules to gain extra electron pairs. And therefore, these compounds are classed as electron pair acceptors. Now, if we were studying organic chemistry, they'd be called electrophiles. But in inorganic chemistry, the term electron pair acceptor is used, and we don't tend to use the term electrophile. Now, in our previous videos, we've learned that there's two ways that these electron deficient compounds can overcome the electron deficiency. The first way is to accept a pair of electrons and form a coordinate bond from another molecule or ion. And we call this donor acceptor compounds. So for example, AlCl3 could form a coordinate bond with a lone pair of electrons from say ammonia and we would have this donor acceptor compound. Now this slide shows a dot and cross diagram to represent the bonding in the donor acceptor compound AlCl3 NH3 and you can clearly see the coordinate bond here between the nitrogen on the ammonia molecule and the AlCl3 and that's how the aluminium chloride ends up with a stable octet because it obtains a pair of electrons from another molecule via a coordinate bond. Now the second way that this electron deficiency can be overcome is by the formation of dimers. Now aluminium chloride can exist as AlCl3 or the dimer Al2 Cl6 and this is formed when two AlCl3 molecules link together as a result of the donation of lone pairs of electrons from two of the chlorine atoms. So if we look at this diagram here you can see that the two bridging chlorines each form a coordinate bond, a dative bond to one of the aluminiums and that means that both aluminiums have a share of eight electrons in their outer shell. Now the three main aluminium compounds we're going to focus on in this video are aluminium oxide, aluminium hydroxide and aluminium chloride. Now we've learned previously that aluminium chloride is covalent and the reason for this is because there's a small highly charged positive ion Al3 plus 
next to a large negative ion, Cl-, and this causes polarization of electrons and distortion of the electron cloud, leading to covalent bonding. Now, aluminium oxide is ionic, not covalent, and this is because the oxide ion is a lot smaller than the chloride ion, and therefore there's not as much polarization, distortion of the electron cloud, and it's not covalent, it's ionic, but it will have some covalent character. Now you should remember from AS chemistry that even if you have a compound made up of a metal and a non-metal, it can have some covalent character, or even be fully covalent. This can happen if certain conditions exist. For example, having a very small positive ion, or a small highly charged positive ion, as in the case of aluminium, together with either a large anion or a large highly charged anion. Now this graphic shows that if we look on the right hand side where we have Al3+, a small highly charged positive ion, and we increase the size of the halide ion here, we end up with covalent bonding. So aluminium fluoride is ionic due to the small size of the fluoride ion. But as we increase the size of the anion, so polarization increases and we end up with covalent bonding. So you can see here that aluminium chloride is covalent and aluminium bromide is covalent. Now covalent bonding is due to this distortion of the electron cloud which is caused by having a highly charged positive ion next to a large negative ion. Now you will remember from AS chemistry that we looked at electron density maps to gain a better understanding of compounds that are ionic, covalent and which have covalent character. Now in aluminium oxide we have Al3 plus and an O2 minus ion. Now the oxide ion is very similar in size to the fluoride ion. However, the difference is that it's got a two minus charge. Having a higher charge on the anion is gonna favor polarization. However, it's not sufficient enough to distort the electron cloud to make it a covalent compound. However, aluminium oxide is going to have some properties similar to covalent compounds, such as poor solubility in water. Now, aluminium oxide is an ionic compound and it has a high melting point of above 2050 degrees C. Now, aluminium oxide is insoluble in water and is classed as amphoteric because it reacts with both acids and bases. And the two equations here show aluminium oxide reacting with dilute acid, hydrochloric acid, to form a salt and water. And it also shows aluminium oxide's reaction with dilute alkali, sodium hydroxide. Now, aluminium oxide consists of Al3 plus ions, which are small, highly charged positive ions, and O2 minus ions, which are small, moderately charged negative ions. Now the result of this is that we have some polarization of electrons, some distortion of the electron cloud. However, it is still an ionic compound, but it does have some covalent character. And that's why you have a compound that has a high melting point, that's typical of ionic compounds, but it's insoluble in water. And that's a property more typical of covalent compounds. So it's got some covalent character. Now when writing chemical equations to show that a compound is amphoteric, we need to write an equation to show a reaction with acid and an equation to show a reaction with alkali. Now I could pick any dilute acid here but I've chosen to pick hydrochloric acid. I could have picked sulfuric acid. I could have picked nitric acid. Now, when aluminium oxide reacts with hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid or nitric acid, it will form a salt 
a chloride and water. So you can see that Al2O3 reacts with 6HCl to form 2AlCl3 plus 3H2O. Now if we react the aluminium oxide with a alkali such as dilute sodium hydroxide we get the following chemical reaction. Al2O3 would react with 3H2O and 2NaOH to form 2NaAlOH in brackets 4. And this is a soluble complex. Now if we carried out this experiment we would see a white solid that's insoluble Al2O3 dissolving in excess aqueous sodium hydroxide to form a colorless solution and this colorless solution would be our NaAlOH in brackets 4 complex. Now it's not just aluminium oxide that is amphoteric aluminium hydroxide is also amphoteric and we can form aluminium hydroxide if we react a solution containing Al3 plus ions with sodium hydroxide solution. Now when you react any solution that contains Al3 plus ions with aqueous sodium hydroxide we get a precipitation reaction and a white precipitate forms which is aluminium hydroxide and the following ionic equation represents the reaction that would take place. Al3 plus aqueous reacts with three OH minus ions also aqueous to form AlOH in brackets three which is a solid. This is the white precipitate. Now aluminium hydroxide is amphoteric because it would react with both acids and alkalis and we can write the following equations. Aluminium hydroxide would react with an acid to form a salt and water and if we choose hydrochloric acid the following equation would take place ALOH in brackets 3 reacts with 3HCl to form ALCl3 and 3H2O so we would have aluminium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid to form the salt aluminium chloride and water. Now the reason aluminium hydroxide is classed as amphoteric is because it will undergo a reaction with alkali. So for example, AlOH in brackets 3 would react with sodium hydroxide, NaOH, to form the colorless solution NaAlOH in brackets 4. And the observation here would be our white precipitate our aluminium hydroxide dissolving in excess sodium hydroxide to form this colorless solution. Now this short video clip shows the reaction that would take place if we had aluminium hydroxide reacting with excess sodium hydroxide. Now aluminium hydroxide is a white insoluble solid so we've got a white precipitate here and when we add excess sodium hydroxide the white precipitate dissolves in excess sodium hydroxide to form a colorless solution. So you can see sodium hydroxide has been added here and it's starting to dissolve and it doesn't take long and it doesn't take that much sodium hydroxide to get the white precipitate to dissolve. It just needs a little bit of shaking and now we have a colorless solution forming. Now the formation of a colorless solution here shows us that a chemical reaction has taken place and the aluminium hydroxide has reacted with the sodium hydroxide to form a new complex which is Na. Al OH in brackets 4. Now we've just seen that two compounds of aluminium, aluminium oxide and aluminium hydroxide, are amphoteric, which means they react with both acids 
and bases. Now aluminium is very much in the borderline region between having ionic or covalent compounds. So therefore the fact that aluminium oxide and aluminium hydroxide are amphoteric is no great surprise. If we draw a border between metals and non-metals in the periodic table, aluminium is located close to this border. And we often find that elements that are close to the border between metals and non-metals exhibit amphoteric behaviour, especially with their compounds. For example, lead is also located in the periodic table quite close to the border between metals and non-metals and lead 2 oxide and lead 2 hydroxide are both amphoteric compounds. Zinc is another element that is quite close between this border between metals and non-metals and zinc hydroxide is an amphoteric compound. Many scientists believe that the amphoteric nature of these compounds is down to the elements having intermediate electronegativity values. In other words, these elements not being electronegative or really being electropositive, having intermediate values. Now it's not just aluminium oxide and aluminium hydroxide that is amphoteric. Aluminium metal is also amphoteric as it will react with both acids and alkali. Now aluminium reacts with dilute acid to form a salt and hydrogen and it will react with hot aqueous alkali to form a soluble complex and hydrogen gas. Now although you're required to learn the equations which show aluminium oxide and aluminium hydroxide are amphoteric, you are not required to learn the equations that show aluminium metal is amphoteric. Now this short video clip from the Simply Chem YouTube channel shows what happens when you add hydrochloric acid to aluminium. Now at first it looks like the aluminium is not reacting and this is because aluminium has a layer of aluminium oxide and this protects the aluminium from reacting and showing its true reactivity. But after a while, this aluminium oxide layer will start to perish and then the aluminium is exposed and can react with the hydrochloric acid. Now once this aluminium oxide layer has disappeared, quite a violent reaction takes place with lots and lots of hydrogen gas being produced. And the reaction goes faster and faster and it's quite a violent reaction. So now let's test what you've learned in this video with some practice questions. Here's the first practice question. Read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question one says, explain using monomeric covalent aluminium chloride, what is meant by electron deficient and why this leads to the ready formation of the Al2 Cl6 dimer. You should show the structure of this dimer as part of your answer and it's a three mark question. So to get one mark, you need to show that the bonding of aluminium in the monomer AlCl3 doesn't have the complete octet. It doesn't have a share of eight electrons. Now to get the second mark you need to draw the structure of the Al2 Cl6 dimer. So this is drawn on this slide and you need to show that each aluminium has three covalent bonds to chlorines and it also has a coordinate bond from one of the bridging chlorines. And if you draw the structure correctly, you get the second mark. Now to get the final mark, you need to show the examiner that you realize that the formation of this dimer 
is there to get rid of the electron deficiency and form the stable octet of bonding electrons. Because you're trying to show that this is a way of each aluminium getting a share of eight electrons. So if you state that the dimer is a way of forming this stable octet of eight electrons, you get the final mark. So here's our next practice question. Read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question 2a states, aluminium hydroxide reacts with sulfuric acid to form a salt and water. Write a chemical equation to describe this reaction. And it's a one mark question. So the chemical equation would be 2al OH in brackets 3 plus 3H2SO4 forms Al2SO4 in brackets 3 plus 6H2O. One mark for that. Now for part B it says aluminium hydroxide is classed as an amphoteric compound. Explain what this means. Well it means that it reacts with both acids and bases. You could say it's got acidic and basic properties. You could say it reacts with both acids and alkalis. Any of those answers are fine for one mark. Now part C says write a chemical equation to describe the reaction that takes place when aluminium hydroxide reacts with aqueous sodium hydroxide. It's a one mark question. Now the equation would be AlOH in brackets 3 plus NaOH forms NaAlOH in brackets 4. And this is a soluble complex. So the state symbols would be S for the ALOH in brackets 3, aqueous for the NaOH, and aqueous for the soluble complex it forms. So here's our final practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question three says, aluminium chloride is a compound of the amphoteric element aluminium, whilst magnesium chloride contains the non-amphoteric element magnesium. Explain how sodium hydroxide can be used to distinguish between solutions of these two compounds. And this is a three mark question. So you get the first mark for the idea of adding sodium hydroxide solution dropwise until you've got an excess of the sodium hydroxide. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to form aluminium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, and then see if the compounds dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide. So one mark is given for the idea of adding sodium hydroxide carefully, dropwise, until you have an excess of it. So you get the second mark for the idea that the magnesium chloride here will form a white precipitate and this precipitate won't dissolve when you add excess NaOH because it's not amphoteric. So you get one mark for that. Now to get the final mark you need to say that the white precipitate that you'll form with the aluminium chloride, in other words the aluminium hydroxide, will then dissolve in excess NaOH. Now this is because the aluminium hydroxide is amphoteric and a chemical reaction takes place that forms a soluble complex. In this case NaAlOH in brackets 4. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video you should now understand that some aluminium compounds exhibit covalent bonding even though aluminium is a metal and the reasons for this, you should also be able to explain the electron deficient nature of some aluminium compounds and how this is overcome in terms of the formation of dimers and donor acceptor compounds. And finally, you should be able to explain the meaning of the term amphoteric and be able to write chemical equations to show why aluminium oxide and aluminium hydroxide are classed as amphoteric compounds. So that concludes this video lesson. 
So please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. O Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS and A-level videos, and our Twitter site, at Radochemistry.